Let's have a look at the components within the system. There's really just three parts to it. We have the control surface up here, which doesn't pass any audio, but it controls the audio passing through the system. This is where all the mixing takes place. We also have the stage box, which handles all of the inputs going to the system and all of the bus outputs coming out of the system. The stage box usually is located on the stage and it handles all of the inputs coming from the stage and going from the console back to the stage. And over here we have the local rack which houses the DSP engine for the whole digital mixing system. On the back of the local rack, which we'll see a little later, you also have some local patching points for inputs and outputs. What you have here on the VI4 is 48 inputs arranged in blocks of 8, labelled A, B, C, D, E, F, over here. On the VI6, it's exactly the same except you have an additional 16 inputs, giving you 64 inputs in total. On the VI4 system, you have 24 output buses. Now these are for your auxes and group outputs and matrix outputs. And again, on the VI6, you have an extra eight outputs giving you 32 buses. A very good point to mention here is that every single bus on the system, whether it's a VI4 or a VI6, every single output has a physical connector. The stage box is connected from the stage to the back of the local rack using these two connectors here. It's a single connector which plugs in here, locks into place, and these two connectors are identical. This is the main output for all of the channels coming to and from the stage box, and this one here is just an auxiliary offering redundancy in case there's a failure for any reason on the main connection. So here we have the local rack, and this is located at the same place as the control surface, and it houses the DSP engine for the system. And this DSP engine is based on Studer S-Core technology, which is a 40-bit floating-point architecture. Right, so now we're around the back of the local rack, where you can see there's a lot more I.O. Along this top row here, you'll see that there are 16 balanced line inputs. Below that, 16 balanced line outputs. Now, these are very useful for creating analog insert points, which you can then insert into any of the channels on the control surface and later on in the DVD you'll see how we use those. There are also 16 AES EBU inputs and outputs for connecting digital devices. Down in the bottom left hand corner here we see that there's the monitor A left, right and centre outputs and monitor B left and right outputs. And This is very useful if the console is going to be used in a monitor application for driving a pair of wedge speakers or for simple near-field left-right monitoring. There are also some microphone inputs here for locally patching in microphones. Over here we see the cables that come from the stage box. You have two of these as I explained earlier. One is for redundancy. Next to this we see this cable here which handles all the control data that comes from the control surface. And as part of this umbilical cord here, we also get talkback and headphones, which connect into the local rack at the bottom here. We can see here that the control surface has two power supplies offering redundancy. And this is the same for the stage box and for the local rack. So now let's get back around the front of the console and get on with mixing.